fight for me. The conclusion of today's session was that we were going to recommend to our Labor Relations Committee in a call later today that we lock out at the conclusion of this deal, which is at midnight tonight. We're back. We're here. We're trying to tell the story. What's up, YouTube? It's time to tell the story we've all been waiting to hear. How did this channel start? Everyone's looking like, wait a second, you have 10,000 subscribers and you have 2 million views, but yet, who the f are you? I'm the person who started this channel with two other people. We created this web series called Under the Armor. If you don't know, it used to like be out during 2011, during the killer 2011 NBA lockout. <laughs> Pretty much, I met Brandon Jennings one day on the flight. Um, he hadn't got off the flight just yet, and I was like, yo, I really f***ed your game. It's this crazy lockout going on right now, and ain't nobody like getting a chance to see you guys hoop. You guys are hooping all the time. Him, KD, um, Russell Westbrook, um, James Harden. It just seemed like it was just everybody out there hooping or whatever. So, and that's when he was like, yeah, how much you charging? I was like, bro, I'll do it for free, bro. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really thinking about my clientele at the time as I'm doing it all. It was really honestly on some like, yo, a genuine project for me to like really f with it and like not feel like I'm just doing this for the money. While we're in New York filming our very last episode, I end up waking up to see this on the news. Could be another week before the NBA ratifies the new labor deal and releases its 66 game schedule. You can just imagine the scrambling that is going on at league headquarters. Meanwhile, you've never seen multi millionaire superstars so excited for a training camp. Here's Rachel Nichols. They came to a boys and girls club in Brooklyn for a food drive. But with NBA games back on the horizon, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul were plenty happy to also talk a little hoop. To see some of the scheduling, um, to see that we're going to have a season, um, you know, it was a great day. I felt like, you know, my kids on Christmas Day, uh, you know, the excitement for the game, you know, I mean, we all missed it. Um, you guys all missed it, but more importantly, our fans missed it. We're so excited to be able to come back and, and play this game. These past few months have been just brutal, right? You know what I mean? As far as not being able to go out there and do what we love. So we're just excited that we get this opportunity again. You know, we've been dealing with the lockout for a long time now. I to finally come to an end and get basketball back. Now, for everybody else, that's great news. The NBA is back. But for me, my little, like, video career is kind of done with for a second. That's when I decided to like really make myself like a real company. We ended up partnering with Russell Simmons and Under Armour and creating so much more content. Um, we ended up doing a lot of the Steph Curry stuff. We shot his ESPN commercial when he won his first championship. And we really were like taking off as like a real like company. But at the same time, we were going down because we weren't really getting paid that much. And you gotta survive in New York, so. I ended up taking off to LA. And as much as I hated to stop working on the company that we like worked tirelessly on, um, you just have to do this right for yourself. And one of my partners got a big job offer over at Vice, and then my other editor, he ended up moving over to Amsterdam and I9. That's like a lesson learned. You know, whenever you start a company with other people, you gotta make sure everybody's on the right financial track and have the right same vision at the same time because. It's tough when you try to just do it all just by ear, you know. Um, it doesn't really work out that way. There's a lesson learned within doing that, you know. No matter what company you start with people, you all have to be like financially ready. You all have to be on the same track to do this. If one person doesn't have the right financial situation, you all can be So this is a really crucial part of this story. I have to let you guys know that um, my whole experience in New York, I literally had no windows for eight years. I had two basement apartments. One of them didn't even have a door with it. That was when we were doing our media company and I had this little room that had like a bathroom in it, but it was cool because it was a bathroom in it. And people had to come through my room, which usually they were just like, okay, I'm not gonna come through this room, this bathroom upstairs. Yeah, we had like a four bedroom 
but really it was three bedrooms and I had stayed in like a den and we literally just stayed up every single night making these Under the Armour videos for you guys and I appreciate you guys tuning in to watch that and I hope you guys stick around to hear me um, talk some more about these vlogs that are going to be taking place because you know I'm coming with it. Anything I put my name attached to you just have to know like I'm not about to like let that opportunity go away. So I just think that's a very crucial part of the story because I feel like sleeping in a room with no windows in New York really lets you know how bad I really wanted to be in New York. I mean people didn't really say anything about it but they were my friends most of the time so, so you guys get a chance to get the real me for the very first time. So I want to introduce you guys to the studio for the first time ever. You guys get a chance to check out my 9-11 uh, tribute um, background scene, whatever you want to call that. I used to live in New York for like 10 years as some of you might know that. Um, but now I'm back in LA and I'm loving my life again because it was just going downhill in New York and I'll tell you all about that story too. You know and another thing about that, we put that up literally right before 9-11 happened and it's been up since then and that's just, I don't know, that's kind of what happened on like what encouraged me to move to New York in the first place but I'm not sure when you kind of wake up and you're like, you know, in high school and you come out and you see the Twin Towers in your, in your theater room, you're kind of like, wait a second, is that a sign? I kind of wanted to just take a break for a while and it took like a three, four year break from making videos for a while. Um, just because it was just like, you know, I don't want to get into that. You just meet a lot of interesting people that make you really like check yourself and be like, do I really want to do this anymore? So I decided to do a lot more video editing now because I can still be a part of projects and not have to travel around the world and deal with all the stuff that I normally have to deal with. I'm just kind of just ready to get past it all. We've already started this channel a long time ago and I'm just ready to just keep it going to be honest with you. Like I can't sit here and like dwell on the past any longer. I'm ready to start doing some kick-ass vlogs and just talk to you guys every day. How about that? Would you tune in? Really? It's like so many rules that I'm thinking about before I even like got to the end. I'm just already in my mind. It's just the start. I'm just informing you guys. Please somebody help me like name this guy. All right, because he's going to be here every day. Like this is lo-fi hip hop like for real. Literally, a trash bag over. See now, in the black families, we call these trash bags. We keep them forever because you just never know when we're gonna use them. So I'm using it as like some kind of like a soft box. I don't know what you want to call it right now, but it's just a thingamajigger because this light is dumb yellow and when I pull it over, it just gives it some kind of like a little of a whiter effect. So I don't know. You call it hood, I call it innovating, so whatever you want to call it, you know, as long as you call it something, you know. But I have the jankiest YouTube setup ever. There's two flashlights right there, just to kind of like, give me some light above here. And then I got another one sitting right there to give me some light over here. I've got this trusty flashlight right here from the cell phone. Today is a really big day because it is the first time I'm ever vlogging. And you may be thinking, why is he vlogging now after nine years, after all that success what he was doing before, why is he starting to vlog now? I'm doing it as a way to kill all those excuses about why I didn't make like videos all the time. It's always been like an up and down thing where it's like, where are you gonna go with this career thing? Because I think every four years, a new platform comes out where you're like, wow, I should really be in that space right there. And I feel like you just have to like stay above the curve when it comes to that because if not, if not, if you stick to one, you will get left behind. And now after like nine years, I realized that to be successful on YouTube, you have to show up to work every single day. Now you should never compare yourself to other people in life, but I'm 35 and I'll be 36 this year. And I'm just like, how long am I really gonna go before I start this damn YouTube channel? I really enjoyed you guys tuning in and just listening to this whole little rambling story of mine just so I can get this off my chest to just say, hey, I actually started one vlog and you should go check it out. So you guys seen the whole YouTube setup. You guys know now why I started this channel and why I started vlogging. So that's it. There's no more story. Click the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, and click when you see the next one comes up. All right, peace.